Are you a book lover or enthusiast? Do you need genuine and unique lifestyle products? Or are you looking for a place where you can find contemporary and a wide range of unique gifts for children and adults? Laterna is your go-to place for genuine and contemporary books and lifestyle products for wholesale and retail customers. We stock business books on management, leadership, financial success, entrepreneurship, personal development, and so much more. We carry children's fiction, non-fiction, educational books, CDs, and DVDs. We also stock Christian books on various themes, such as church life and growth, spirit-filled living, love, sex, and marriage, to mention but a few. Laterna carries life and style books, such as baby and child care, beauty and style, conception and pregnancy, crafts, and hobbies. We also carry adult, children, and teenagers' Bibles, educational toys, framed art, gifts, greeting cards, home and office fragrances, stationery, teachings, and lots more. Our stores are located at Plot 1611 Adiola Hopewell Street, Victoria Island, Lagos. online at www.laternabooks.ng. Laterna. Your lifestyle hub for book lovers. For inquiries, call 0803 304 442 0809-525-3223 0809-525-3484 or 0809-525-3485 Chat with us via WhatsApp on 0810 Zero two three four 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 one. You may also reach us on social media via Twitter at Laterna Books, Instagram at Laterna Books, and Facebook at Laterna Ventures. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. You're welcome to Laterna, and welcome to our sixty-four book reading section compliments of the season <laughs> today i'll be introducing latana our past reviews and then our moderator um, latana ventures limited is a leading literature and lifestyle product importation distribution and marketing organization in nigeria with a very strong and consistent focus on customer satisfaction latana has grown from a christian bookstore one of the most reliable sources for Bibles, business, Christian books, children books, educational toys, gift items, gift bags, and wrap, home and office fragrances, musical instruments, musical CDs and DVDs, teachings, stationery, and journals. Atana was established in 1996, and the company has remained in the forefront of educating Nigeria through provision of global best-selling books and children educational materials. With a global access to over 10,000 titles and several other products, Atana is a supplier to other retailers in 33 states of Nigeria, including FCT Abuja. Atana currently runs a, a book club for children. As part of our initiative to encourage the culture of reading, reading Atana started the Adult Book Reading Club. Our aim is to continually encourage the culture of reading among adults considering the impact that book contributes to human development so once again we are welcome so i would like to just run through what we've done in the past our reviews we started this book club in 1920 july 2020 2020 to be precise and the first book reading was done by mrs wonola de tayo and she read the book the four disciplines of education before dx the Stagbenga for Lion reviewed What Every Man Wants in a Woman, What Every Woman Wants in a Man, a book by Pastor John and Diana Hagee, the book on marriage. Then we had um, Dr. Abby Abraham. She reviewed Eat This and Leave, a book on health. And then Dr. Usain Udo, he read The Dichotomy of Leadership, a book on leadership. And then we have um, Mrs. Nkoyo Rapu, of this present house she read the five love languages of children 
And then we have Mrs. Lamide Balogun, the Dane Plan, a book on health. And then Mrs. Adenike Ogulesi, the MD of um, Rough and Tumble, she did teamwork 101. Then we had Pastor Mrs. Nana Odejayi, who is our um, moderator today. She did Purpose Driven Life, a book of, on purpose and life of significance. And then we have Mrs. Adeke Adekwetun. She, she read her book, Little by Little, a book on healing. And then Dr. Kechiku Enelema, the former Minister of uh, Industry, Trade and Investment, um, read um, Mark on Gladwell's Outliers. And then we have Dr. Shola Folalade. He read a book by Maxwell, How Successful People Lead. And then Mrs. Udo Okonjo, Tools of Titans. African farmer Mogaji read his book, Farming by Revelation, a book on entrepreneurship. And then Mr. Femi Edu read A Promised Land, a book by Barack, on, Barack Obama, an autobiography. Then Pastor Pojo Yemade of the Covenant Nation read um, a book on a Jogan, Jogan Club. The club was the former coach of uh, Borussia Dortmund and then uh, Liverpool. It was a biography. And then Mrs. Abimbola Shemolu read her book, for the love of family and Mrs. Odua Yostoya, an executive director at MTN Foundation, did attitude one one. This is Yewande Zakios read a book, read her books. We God's way to room one, two, three, four. It's a book on waiting, especially for those looking for the fruit of the womb. And then Mrs. Yemi C. Ayeni read um, an autobiography by Kamala Harris, the current vice president of the United States, The Truth We Hold. And then Mrs. Ndunneli read her book on food entrepreneurs in Africa. That's on entrepreneurship. Dr. Kende Wani, the CEO of a middle group, read um, The Leader's Greatest Return, part one and two. And Sunday only said the Nigerian footballer and coach did Audacity to Refuse. That's his book, an autobiography. And then the late Ledonia Kowenu, may her soul rest in peace, did My Father's Daughter, an autobiography. And then we had Mrs. Ade, BC Ade, I mean, Success is a Choice by Max Wesh did that. And then Mrs. Tommy Rotimi did Get Fit and Live by Don Corbett, a book on healthy living. And then Mrs. Mr. I came back with it, it as last, not first, a book on leadership. And Mrs. Bridget Oyefe Sodido, Built for the Storm, her book is a book on motivation. Mr. Kayodo Luashego Jome read Maxwell's Make Today Count. And then Mrs. Chief Mrs. Taiwo Taiwo read her own book, My Mother's Daughter is an Autobiography. And Mrs. Funke Susan Medium uh, Medu read The Rookie Entrepreneur. That's a, a book on entrepreneurship. And then Mrs. Winifred Olubomi Woke The Prescription for Life. That's a book on healthy living. And Mr. Chukwe Mekka Ndu did Maxwell Leadership 101. And Apostle Follow Risho Alakija, the um, Africa richest woman, she did blossom in her book, an autobiography. And then Mrs. Bukola Smith, The Power of Habit, she did that on motivation. And then Mrs. On Nana Odejai, a moderator again, she did. Um, Larry Bossida and Ramcharan's book, uh, Execution, The Discipline of Getting Things Done. And Mr. Kaya Dolishagu Ojo, Our Iceberg is Melting, a book on change. And Mr. Sonny Enebi, Leading in Tough Time, by John C. Maxwell. And Mr. Aswe Igodalo, the PDP candidate in the last uh, Edo State Gubernatorial Election. He did um, a book by John C. Maxwell, How Successful People Think. And Mrs. Yetunde Zakios, Yewande Zakios did an eventful life, her book, a book that she wrote when she clocked 60. Uh, Mrs. Yewande Zakios um, is an event planner and also a co founder of Wimbiz. And then Mrs. Coco Kalango, she did a book on Pastor Adebayo, Adeboye. And this is, and the title of the book is This is Pastor Adebayo, Adeboye. And then Mrs. Tomi Rotimi, did some of many parts, her book, an autobiography, and Mrs. Adiron Kionedeko to my younger self, a book for young people. And Mrs. And Mr. George Onofo Wokan, he is the CEO of um, Coleman Wires and Cables. He did um, a book titled Atomic Habits. 
and Mrs. Bola Mateloko, the Excellent Life Series. That's her book. And Mr. Chike Onya did um the Harvard Business Review titled Emotional Intelligence, Energy and Motivation. And Mr. Iho Nero did manage your time to manage your life. Pollution, but I must say unleash your superpowers. Dr. Abiola Salabi, the peak performing woman's opinion. That's our own book. And Mr. Chiki Onya again did how to be intelligent without being stupid. His book. And Barrister Femi D. Ojumu did the dynamic intersection of economics, foreign relations, uh, and national development. A book on law. He is the barrister. So that's his book. And Mr. Kayari Buka did um, Red and uh, Blink by Malcolm Gladwell. And Dr. Patrick Ijewere did. Um, Reviewed Eat This and Live, a book on healthy living by Don Corbett and Mrs. Oluwatoni Asada did Beyond Handshake, a book on networking. Mr. Tunde Falashes did start with Why, Simon Sinai book on leadership. Um, Mr. Mutau did Secrets of the Millionaire's Mind, T. Harvey Aka book on finance. Mrs. Omotai of Akorode did Abike, did two books actually, Abike and the Unlikely All Merchant. And then Omo um, Boom Baby Oops the client is upset. A book on marketing and customer service. Mr. Lao Sade we did blind spot his book. And then Mr. Lang Yomo Yele did brand or be brand or be bland. A book on marketing and branding. Mr. Demola Labiche. Um Mr. Demola Labiche was the former CEO of Wema Bank and then currently the family home funds limited chairman. Um, he did his book, Transformational Leader. Then Mr. Dr. Orlando Lumide, or DJ, did Genius Matters. And that's a book on artificial intelligence. And then we are here today for the 64th edition. So quickly, I would like to welcome our moderator, Mrs. Nana Odejai. Mrs. Nana Odejai, we are very, we are excited to have you here today as our moderator. And she is a certified um, John P. Maxwell coach. She's a human resource and learning professional. She's the CEO of eCard Consulting. She has 20 years experience in HR and learning, 16 years experience as a pharmacist, okay. and she worked as a head of FCMB Learning Academy. So please join me in welcoming her as she engages our reviewer for you. So welcome, Ms. Sotetai. Thank you very much. Always my pleasure to be at Nathana. And I want to welcome everyone to today's session, even all those that are online. I welcome all of you. I, I am, mean, it's always um, people with active mind that join sessions like this, people that are ready to learn, to relearn, or to unlearn. So I welcome you, community of learners, both on site and online. Today we are with, um, I don't even know how to describe it. <laughs> I remember the days at um, Freedom Hall. And he used to come to teach us and how we learned so much, so much from him. So it's just a pleasure to be with you today, sir. So we are having Dr. <laughs> I wanted to say Pastor. <laughs> Kate Unuzo with us. And I'll just read a brief intro of our book review for today. He'll be reviewing his book, Kings and Priests Unto God. Dr. Kionzo is a consultant nephrologist and the pioneer physician of the first private dialysis center in Nigeria for the treatment of patients with kidney failure and related conditions. Life Support Medical Center opened its doors to patients officially on October 4th, 1986. He was trained in both Nigeria and the USA. Dr. Unuzo received the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior on June 28, 1970 at the guest invitational service. And on the night of June 28, he had a vivid dream where a voice asked him to wake up and read John 6, 20. That scripture reads, It is I, be not afraid. And that was his first encounter with the Lord Jesus. He changed his life entirely and set him on a course to know the one who has called him. In 1973, at an anointing service at the University of Ibadan in Nigeria, he received an apostolic calling with emphasis on the teaching and the prophetic ministries. He has watched over the years as the Holy Spirit has exposed and expanded his callings to touch several lives in different parts of the world. Dr. Onuzo has authored several books that try to survey various dimensions of the spirit-led life. 
is globally acknowledged as a conference and seminar speaker and minister of God's work, formerly the Associate Pastor of the National Headquarters Church of the First Square Gospel Church in Nigeria, Pioneer Chapter President of the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International, FGBMFI, Ikeja in 1986, from which he rose to become a National Director of the Fellowship in Nigeria before stepping aside in the year 2000. Currently, he serves as the President's LifeLink Worldwide Ministries under which he runs the Kingdom Life Seminars to raise a community of believers, disciples to live of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's married to Miriam, a medical doctor, and they have four children, Dilichi, Chinaza, Dinachi, and Chibundu. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we are so blessed to have him with us today, and I want you to open your minds to receive, to learn, and also to engage him, even as he reviews his book on kings and priests unto God. Let's give it up for Jesus. Thank you, sir. You're most welcome. Praise the Lord. Well, it is, a, it is a great pleasure to have the opportunity to uh, um, read my book or review it. <laughs> I was just telling her that I have done this before. So I called my daughter, who is an author, and uh, to give me some idea of what is expected. <laughs> but anyway, I hope um, I'm able to make the best of it. Um, Kings and priests unto God, I will actually describe as a journey of discovery. Um, because the inspiration came from um, when I realized that our Lord Jesus Christ, He gave a global commission to 11 unlettered men. I mean, you could, you could, you could imagine it. You call fishermen, call local traders, people who didn't go to school. And then you say to them, go into all the world. <laughs> you know, when I began to think about it, that it became mind boggling, you know, that he must know something we don't know that 11 unlettered people can transform the world. And they did. And so the, the, the challenge is, they must have known something. He must have taught them something. And then that was when the real search began. What is it that uh, they did? Because within 30 years, the whole world had heard the gospel. Europe, Africa, everywhere. They've gone everywhere. In India, they've gone everywhere. Something, it, there must be something we need to know. Anyway, that was how the search started. But then when I, 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 I started the search gradually, it opened up. The first thing was the mystery. That there are mysteries. Jesus said, unto you it is given to know the mystery. You know? And uh, the Christian mystery is not something hidden. You know, no, it's something hidden for you to discover. It's not a call. No, it's a mystery, but you have to, you have not always have to probe um, to find it out. Okay. And from there, okay, I encountered another scripture that changed my life. Um, and that's in Psalm 8. That scripture says, He made us a little lower than Himself. You know, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man? No, but you made him a little, that the, the old King James says, a little lower than angel. But then the modern translation said, no, what the scripture, the text actually says, a little lower than himself. Or some people say a little lower than God. And that then helped me understand that there's something called creational status. And that when he created us, he, he made us a little lower than himself, but higher than angels. Then he created a very significant point, which is that demons shouldn't be troubling you and I, because in creational hierarchy, we are higher. And if we knew that, like our Lord Jesus Christ said, if you know the truth, ah, then you are free. And a lot of what is happening to the church signals. So, that was one of the building blocks. Okay. Then the next one 
uh, um, uh, is the is the priority. The priority. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, "Seek you first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and then every other thing will be added." And then I realized that part of our problem is that we are building organization. We are not building the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God is a powerful transformational presence. That's why Jesus said in Luke 17, he said, the kingdom of God is inside. And so if the kingdom of God is not inside, it doesn't matter where you go. It doesn't matter what you do. You know, you won't be able to change your world. And he didn't actually send us to build organization. No, he sent us to change lives. So if you have a million people whose lives are not changed, we are not fulfilling the commission of the kingdom of God to change people's lives. Okay, so now, how, how did these 11 people manage to change the entire world? You know, how, how were they able to do that? And then the next thing that evolved was the centrality of God's will. Then I started to look at the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, it's very, very fascinating. Okay. He was born by very poor parents. He lived for about 30 years in near total obscurity. You know, nobody knew anything about him. Then at 30 years, he emerges and has a public ministry for three and a half years. Then he dies and he leaves. And yet, we are still here talking about the same thing. So, how was he able to leave something that was indestructible? Then I discovered that uh, the secret was in the pursuit of the divine will. He said, repeated, I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the Father who said. And then he also taught us to pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Then I read Ecclesiastes 3.14. It said, we know that whatsoever God does is forever. Nothing can be added to it. Nothing can be taken away from it. And so, a man can do something that is eternal if he follows the divine will. Because God is eternal. So everything he does is eternal. And so if I want to do something that will last, if I do it according to human wisdom, it will be temporal. But if I do it according to the divine order, it will be eternal. And that's why our Lord Jesus Christ, he struggled in Gethsemane, you know, with the divine will. He struggled because it was a horrible, horrible experience. That he was about to do. But then he knew that if he didn't do it that way, if Allah, heaven won't come and endorse. And so when he uh, hung on that cross, he said, It is finished. In other words, I have completed the divine program. And that's why Christianity and, and destroying Christianity is not for uh, the inability to destroy Christianity is not for want of people who want to do it. No, many people have tried to destroy Christianity, but because it's eternal, you know, and, and it's not sustained by violence or force or, or arms. No, it's sustained by the power of God because it's done, it was done according to the divine way. That's when I, actually this goes, it's, then I wrote one book called uh, God's Move the Way to Power because I realized that outside of the divine will it doesn't matter people may be following their ambitions they may be apparently successful you know in what they're doing the world may hail them but that's not what matters what matters is is it in the divine will is this what god really wants because if you do it, it doesn't matter if you left like our lord jesus Christ, just 11 people it doesn't matter if you left only five people he will survive 
because it's eternal. God's God who is eternal, he was behind every step. Our Lord Jesus Christ showed us that you have to do everything the way God wants. And that's why I keep telling believe don't worry about results. No, because you see, when you worry about results, then you are, you are after what men say. Honor, like the Lord Jesus Christ told the Jews, you are seeking honor from men. You know, so so our Lord Jesus Christ couldn't be bothered. But he had the divine will at the center of everything. And he made some unbelievable statements. John 5, 19 said, the son can do nothing. So, so John 14, 31, he said, this is how I want to show the world that I love the Father. How I do everything he commands. You know? And so, and so when, when we want to live our lives, you know, it is to reproduce his life. You know, Christianity, like I tell you, you and I didn't start. Okay, we have to go to the man who started it to figure out how it should be lived. You know, and so, and so the pursuit of the divine will was at the very center. And you know, the thing about Christianity is you keep picking it up in bits and pieces. Okay, then I, I looked at how those 11 people did this thing. Paul wrote something for us. He said, the weapons of our warfare are not come. So, they may ask me to do so, but to my own opinion, I, I don't see any significance. You know, buying this, buying this, and, and make decrees here and there. It doesn't sound like they are serious. You know, because some people are like saying, oh, go do something really to show. I said, no. The, the scriptures reveal something. So, in fact, that, that scripture also changed my life. It's in Hebrew, 11 verse 3. It says, by, by faith, we know that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Then the next statement is where the secret really are. It said, the things that are visible, they came from things that are not visible. And that thing is revolutionary. So you might come here and, 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 and I'll give you a simple example. Jeremiah wrote a decree against Babylon. He gave it to uh, Mariah, who was following Zedekiah to Babylon. He said, take these decrees. When you get to Babylon, read it in the air there. Tie a stone to it. Drop it in the Euphrates River. He said, as it sinks, so will Babylon sink and never rise again. You know? And then Nereah goes to Babylon, reads the thing there, ties the stone there, and it sinks. And Babylon has never risen again. Even when Saddam Hussein tried to rebuild Babylon, you know what happened. And so, and so, the Bible says the things that are visible, they come from invisible things. In other words, you and I must be able to galvanize the spiritual forces, to walk on our behalf, in order to fulfill the divine will and purpose. And that's where it's empowering, because anybody can do it. You cannot say, well, the reason why I'm not able to do that is because our church is small or our organization is not funded or um, we are not many or we are not literate. You know, we're... all of those things don't matter. What matters is that you discover what God wanted you to do and you began to do it and to your greatest surprise the world around you is changing. This is what uh, um, uh, this book is all about. That ordinary people, you and I, we can bring about change in our world. There are loads of people when you see, when they, they confront, you know, challenges, like complicated challenges, like in Nigeria, perversive evil. It's unbelievable. Everywhere you turn, perversive evil. And you're like, oh, you know, Nigeria can become a righteous solution. Everybody laughs. <laughs> Everybody laughs. Are you going to repopulate it with angels? You know. So, so, so 
But but then, when you understand the way the system runs, you just go and to God and find out what exactly am I supposed to do? This is where we are going. So what am I supposed to be doing? And when you get that blueprint of what you're supposed to be doing, and you start doing it, one day everybody will wake up and the change has come. The reason is because God is not a man. Yes, he's not limited. He knows exactly. And I say to the believers, if God, you are my opinion, he knows what to do. He only needs you to make your own tiny contribution. That's all. And to show that you are loyal and obedient and you are prepared to do whatever he wants so that his purpose, not yours, his purposes can come to you. And so, one of the things that this book reveals is that by making us, in Revelations 1, 5, it said, by making us kings and priests unto God, he has universalized it. So, you give your life to Christ, nobody needs to ordain you a king and a priest unto God. Nobody needs to crown you. No, because you have given your life to Christ, that a king and a priest unto God. And you know the irony of that. So a man is a king and a priest there. Yeah. See, and there are loads of thieves here. And you come and meet himself. You are the king here, right? You are the priest here. Oh, there are many thieves here. And the king says, ah, that's the problem. Oh, everywhere here, thieves. The, the, the king is as helpless. But if you understood what you are there for, okay? You don't need to go to God. So you are the one going to solve this problem. What do you need me to do? So that I can connect to what you want to do. You know, because once I can connect to what you want to do, then it will happen. I have a, a one example in the book. It, was, it happened uh, um, years ago. I traveled abroad and I came back. And my wife told me that uh, they haven't been to church for three Sundays. We are really living in Maryland. Because every time they came out on the road, they would say, I'm Rob, I'm Rob, Rob. They would run back. I'm Rob, I'm Rob. They would run back. So I went to God and said, this is a siege. So does it mean we will not uh, be going to church again? He said, there must be something we can do. There must be something we can do. He told me, say, yes, there's something you can do. Say, put a curse on every income and through robbery and bad. They're very simple. Like that. And I did that for about two weeks. Then I about changed government and brought in Marawa to do. And Marawa started oppression sweep. And after that, we could go to church again. <laughs> so, 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 so. Some people will say, how will you stop the armed robbers? I said, I'm not going to stop the armed robbers. I'm not going to chase them. I'm just going to do what God wants me to do. My tiny contribution so that it will trigger the divine response because he knows what to do to solve the problem. So th that, those are the, the, the realities that I need to be Christian. Nobody needs to know your name. Nobody needs to know where you worship. You can be the most insignificant person in this world. But if you understand that you're a king and a priest unto God, oh yes, you bring you bring, make change wherever you are. Okay. And, and that's why, you know, uh, 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 I, I took this and began to articulate, you know, that... Um, it is possible to actually change the world. Now, in our prayer group, in the Kingdom Life Center, we are making decrees about all the nations of the world. You know, we, we are making decrees about all organizations that are threatened to stand. You know, we are everywhere, we are making decrees. And I, I, I told uh, some, some of the people that I've spoken to on that, the Holy Spirit is our legal draftsman. Do you know why? Because the book says that we do not know what we should pray for. Okay? And then we do not know how we ought to pray for it. So when we, when we 
um, um, rendezvous with the Holy Spirit. He will give us the decree, the, the decree how we should make it, you know. And 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 it is when you make it the way He wants. Ah, that's when you connect with the power, you know. And, and so that's one of it. Then the other one, the other mo- other important aspect of kings and priests unto God is divine empowerment. You know, many people wonder, okay, all the big pastors have power. Assume, okay. So, but what about me? No, 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 me. I say, it doesn't work like that. The Bible says he made us kings and priests, but there's something he did first. He washed us from our sins in his own blood. What does that say to us? He says to us that you can't be empowered with sin. Oh, it doesn't work that way. You can't be empowered. Now, go through the scriptures. They wanted to empower Isaiah. They had to bring a coal from the altar in heaven, say your, your iniquity is purged. Now, Zechariah, in Zechariah chapter 3, he said Joshua, the high priest, is appearing before God. And then he's wearing filthy garments. Uh, what am I going to do? It's okay. Sovereign grace. They wipe away all his sins. They put white, clean garments on him. They put a new turban on his head. So now he's ready for empowerment. Okay. And so, and so he, they say to him, Is it up? Yeah, they, they, they say to him, unless, if you want to be empowered, you've got to follow what God is telling you, okay? So how do we do that? The Bible tells us in, in, in um, Hebrews 10, 19, that if you want to be empowered, you have to come into God's presence and wash in the blood of Jesus. And when I discovered Colossians 1, 21, that when you are washed in the blood of Jesus, you are made holy, you are made unblameable, you are made unreprovable before God. So, when I come to pray, the first thing I must do then is to wash myself in the blood of Jesus. So, it's not complicated. Okay? And said, when I wash myself in the blood of Jesus, you know, and then I'm in the presence, you know, and then I join them to worship Revelation 5, 4 and 5. They tell us how they worship God. They, 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 they extol the holiness of God. So when I come into that presence and I, I worship with the angel, I desire empower. I say, Lord, I need you to empower me so that the kingdom of God can prosper in my own heart. This is what these, these 11 unlettered men, that's what they did and they changed the world. And one of the very fascinating stories in the Bible is when Peter went to the home of Gentiles, it has never been done before. Because the Jews believe that the Gentiles are made for the fires of hell. You know, they are firewood for hell. So, Peter goes to the home of the Gentile. And when he gets back to Jerusalem, everybody's up in arms. How dare you? How dare you? Go? What did Peter say? The Spirit bid me go. Period. It doesn't matter my prejudice. It doesn't matter my hang-ups. It doesn't matter all the obstacles. If the spirit he go, eh, then I must go. It doesn't matter who is displeased. It doesn't matter who is offended. You see, they, they, they knew what it meant to be spiritual, to follow God. So they didn't do things to please men. No, they did things according to divine dictation. And then that's why they succeeded. See, that's why they succeeded. That's why Philip was preaching in uh, uh, Samaria. You know, if he was today, he wouldn't leave that place. He would start a big church because, I mean, everything was explosive there. But the Spirit said, go, go to Joppa, go to Gertrude. And he, he encounters the Ethiopian Union, b- baptizes him. The man goes home and starts a church that is still alive today. The, the, the people follow the Spirit. You know, the Apostle Paul told us in Acts 16 that uh, uh, he wanted to go into Mycenae. The Spirit said, no. Why is he going to preach? The Spirit said, Why don't you go into Shemon? The Spirit said, oh. So 
where will we go? They waited, but then he had that revelation. So a man of Macedon said, ah, we knew his covenant. So they were led by the spirits. And because they were led by the spirit, that's why the work survived. Because everything they did is eternal. Everything. And, and it is reproducible. You can start, sit down in your life and say, okay, from now onwards, I will do everything as God said. You know, I must seek the divine counsel on everything. And that's a scripture, you know, very fascinating scripture in Ephesians 1 it tells us that God does all things after the counsel of his own will. So when I follow the uh, what God is telling me, oh yes, I'm, I'm following the counsel of the divine will. And that's why everything I do also will have a place in the church. So the, the, the greatest burden of my heart is to get every believer not to look helpless in the face of pervasive evil, no matter, no matter how uh, 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 intimidating they may appear. No, just be quiet and say, Lord, how should I pray so that this thing will crumble? You know? Then one of the things that also inspired us, when we started praying, then we encountered um, Luke 18, <laughs> our Lord Jesus said, men ought always to pray and not to thank. You know, before we thought that if you pray one prayer today, you don't need to pray tomorrow. So God is not forgetful. You know, those are all the things. We Until we saw that scripture, Jesus said, this woman, in the morning, avenge me of my adversary. In the evening, avenge me of my adversary. If he had a mobile phone, he would be ringing in the midnight, avenging of man. By the time he, she did that for a week, the man said, where is your adversary? Let me avenge it immediately before you, 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 you drive me crazy. So our Lord Jesus Christ then says, if an unjust judge can respond like that, how do you think God will respond to persistence? So you find many people, they'll tell you, we're praying for Nigeria. Say, when last did you pray? Say, oh, that was at last, last month's night vigil. Does that sound like what Jesus is talking about? No, no. <laughs> that those who want answers are very persistent. You know, every day they're on the same thing until you answer them. And so, if we don't live Christianity our own way, Christian life our own way, but carefully, Ghana, all those little, little things scattered here and there, that tell us how the life is lived, you know, ah, then uh, uh, we won't get their result. But if we do it, ah, yeah, yeah. because well, it's the same. It doesn't change. Okay? So nobody has ever followed what God has done and, and the way he wants to. You will get the same result. You know, you will get the same result. God is faithful to his word. And, and that's why the, my, my, my passion really right in this book is to, you know, nobody needs to wait. I gave my life to Christ in 1970. Okay? This is some 50-something years ago. You don't have to wait for 50-something years to discover all this. No, you can pick up a book like this, okay? And, and go through that. And all of these things that I picked up over all these years, you begin to practice them like a pro. You know, you begin to practice them like a pro. And you will see the changes in your own life, you know, that um, uh, 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 if you follow the divine will, you don't have to look at our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what uh, one of the things that uh, um, um, the Holy Spirit pointed out. He said, what trouble did he go beside the cross? Where did you see him come out and they say, all of a sudden, one lion jumped up and pursued him? No, you wouldn't have that. Because everything is controlled by the Spirit. And the God we serve knows yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So, he's controlling. You know, I was told the story of a gentleman who was on vacation with his family. And the Holy Spirit whispered to him, say, you're going to that gas station. When you enter there and finish buying gas, wait there five minutes before you continue. 
Then he drove in there, bought gas. And then he said to himself, what can I be doing there for five minutes? Then he drove up. Then a drunken driver hit him. And he was paralyzed from the neck down. So, so the God who sees tomorrow says, wait here five minutes. Just wait here five minutes. Just five minutes. So when you hear stories like that, you realize that I need to hear God for myself. I need to follow God because I don't want to be suffering or undergoing unnecessary suffering, falling into all kinds of things. No, I, my, I have to take calculated steps, not calculated by me, but calculated from help so that I don't, I don't enter into things I have no business with. Okay? So if I wake up in the morning and they say to me, Oh, don't, don't, don't go anywhere today. Just sit down here quietly. I'll sit down here quietly. Nobody is going to get me out of that house. Yeah, because you see, the one who is telling you that is already seen, you know, that if you go out to this and the other and that, and you really don't need all of that harassment. That's what I said to people. You don't need all these harassments that people go through. Sometimes when people give testimonies and say, Oh, uh, God delivered me here. God delivered me there. The Holy Spirit will say, it's a great testimony. God delivered them. But the question that, that's one question before that, how did you get on that road? Questions? You know, because the, the, the Bible revealed to us that um, um, they told Joseph, the husband of Mary, take the baby now and run to Egypt. But if you and I were you know, the way we are, said, oh no, Lord, bring Angel Michael, bring uh, Angel Gabriel, this is your son. We can't be running from a uh, uh, herald. No. They, they let uh, Gabriel slap him on the face and, and he will be dead. But they said, Joseph, carry the baby and run. And do you know the, the interesting thing? They provided the money the day before. The, 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 the magic, the, the, the wise men brought gold. So Joseph didn't have to worry about the finance. So off we went to Egypt. Yes. So do what you are told. Don't argue. You know, don't tell them, ah, you have enough, you can do this and that. Don't just do what they, they said. You know, and that's exactly what our Lord Jesus Christ said. And so the, 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 the divine will is at the center of it. Then the other one is the empowerment. Why is it empowerment? That's one I talked about then. Because Jesus, our Lord, He said, the words I speak to you, that spirit. So you need empowerment so that when you make your decree, the anointing will, will be on you. Connect with the power of God. Everything is so simple. It is so simple. It's for you and I to gather it together and then begin to practice and we will be so sure that all these things that look insurmountable. No, don't don't fight at their level. Go to the where you have access and control and where you, you are certain of how, how to operate. And go there. Do as they tell you there. And wait. Wait. You have to wait. And then you change. So that's why we've been praying for a righteous Nigeria. Oh, some people say, oh, preacher, who do you think will bring us? We are not in the business of who? We are not in the business of how. We are in the business of a righteous Nigeria. However he wants to produce it. Oh, yes, absolutely. However he wants to. I say, will a righteous Nigeria come? Sure. Because we are praying for it. And, and our Lord Jesus Christ said in that Luke 18, said he will answer us speedily. Speedily is a relative term. Okay? They told Abraham, you will possess this land speedily, but that's 400 years. You know, because um, it would take 400 years for a family to become a nation. You know, I mean, a family doesn't become a nation overnight. You know, so, and in those, 400, that 400 years, the Amorites that I will dispossess, they are sinning slowly. So by that 400 years, they will have completed their iniquity. You know, somebody will now go and pray. I want to, I want to, I want to possess in 100 years. What is the implication of that? The Amorites must sin a pastor. Lord, can't you help this Amorites sin a pastor so I can possess? There's no such thing. 
So you follow the divine will, you follow the divine timing, you follow everything the way they say because nobody tells God what to do. You know, this is the tragedy of human Christianity. People who are ignorant, they cannot see the next minute. They are telling God what to do. Does it make any sense? No, that's why Jesus said that it will be done on earth as it is in heaven, so that you and I can enter into what God is doing. Kings and priests, every one of us, we are made kings and priests, and we need to know how to operate so that when we all add our voices together, change will come faster. Why do I say Abraham's intercession showed that numbers matter? So he said, if you find 50 people, God said, I will do it. For 45, we will do it. 40, we will do it. 30, we will do it. 20, we will do it. 10, we will do it. So people then ask me, say, Doctor, do you know how many people he's looking for? As I wish he told us. <laughs> but our, our job is to raise people, more and more people, who will live godly. You know, and a lot of people think that when you say that, oh, you have put the actually seal of it, made it never happen. I say, no, living godly is people who understand that nobody lives godly in their own strength. And, and the way to live God is to say to him, guide my footsteps. So, there's, this is this bottle. It will trip me up. Okay? So, he tells me, pass this other way. Okay? Because if you come this way and see this bottle, ah, everything will fall up. And that is it. You know, they keep guiding you so that those things you cannot handle, you will just avoid them. You just avoid them. And then they uh, also, what they do is to always remind you that if you trip up, that blood will wash you. You see, some people think, oh, is that not uh, a license? So if they know the blood will wash them, they will go and collect bribe, commit adultery, and then they go, I've come again, let the blood uh, wash you. Now, if you do that, if you do that, so what will follow is in Hebrews chapter 12. They call it chastisement. They will chastise. Oh, yes. He said, if he doesn't chastise you, then you don't belong. Yeah. If you are doing all of that thing and he does not chastise you, then you don't belong. But if you, if you belong to him, you must chastise you. Because the Bible says in that scripture, he wants you to be a partaker of his holiness. Okay, so they cannot leave you, you know, mess, making a mess. No, and that's why sometimes people keep getting away, getting away. Then one day something happens, everything falls. Okay. Okay. Let me, let me just stop there. Yeah, ask me some questions <clears throat> that was so interesting so instructive so enlightening uh in some cases a reminder for the expectations of god from us now we can have questions please check for me if there's any person online and you have any person in the house just indicate and i'll give you the opportunity to ask the question um to kick start it i'm like the message of this book really it's um like reminding us or telling us again that we are kings and priests unto our god and i dare say that about 80 percent of believers we are like spectators like mentioned you know in this realm we are not really actors Engaged. like yeah. god wants us to be and like you said jesus christ did not go to calvary you know walk down calvary street to raise spectators you know but people that we actually occupy it and it comes and enforce the purpose of the kingdom and the Bible makes us to know that the Holy Spirit actually helps us because okay. he helps Peter from being a timid disciple to become a bold apostle. And you see a lot of speaking in tongues in, amongst believers. And I'm like, why are we not making impact? Why are we not dictating the peace? Look at Nigeria, for example. We can't say that we're in charge. We can't say that we're actually enforcing that counsel of God, bringing the purpose of God as it is in heaven to, ma to, to manifest on us. So I'm like, where is the problem really? The Holy Ghost gives the power. We have the authority. But 
we speak in tongues. We can't say that. Yeah, but you know, know that scripture of Second Corinthians 10 that says the weapons of our warfare not come. The sixth verse said that we have it in a ready to avenge hopes. But we've got to wait for your own obedience to be fulfilled. You see, a lot of people think that speaking in tongues, making decrees, no, it's not in the words. No. The life has to match it. You know? And that's why I see if 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 I uh, uh, collect bribes, okay, then I go to the night vigil and speak in tongues for for four hours, you know, destroying bribery and corruption. It doesn't make any sense. You know, that is the sort of thing we are doing. You know, it doesn't make any sense. It will not connect because it doesn't connect that way. You know, it's, it's, it's the same thing, you know, it, it, about um, nature. You know, you, you have electricity, you have the positive, you have the negative. Okay. You know that you have to somehow bring them together before the light will come. And if it doesn't connect, one, one point is not put into that. Oh, it's not going. And that's the same thing with spiritual life. You know? mm-hmm. So a lot of people, all the prayers that they're praying, okay, hot air. Unfortunately, hot air. Yes. <laughs> okay, um, that brings me to um, the talk on grace. Because if we look at the teaching of grace, yes, we know that we are saved by grace through faith. Yes. And um, we have this righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, not our own righteousness. <laughs> but then people stop there. And they take it that a liberty to live compromised lives, that the grace is there. Not, but, but, but Titus says to us that, he says, for the grace of God that we salvation has appeared unto yes. us. Teaching, Teaching us. Of, yes. Denying, like, denying of godliness, of godliness and godliness. Yes. We should live soberly, righteously yes. and godly. And so I'm like, where is the problem really? Is it that ministers are not teaching a well-rounded um, um, word? Or that some ministries, they just wrong doctrine? Or is it that we, as believers, we don't have clear understanding, I, or we're just resting in a comfort zone? It's easier to live life this way. Where is the problem? The, really? the, the problem is that uh, the truth has been compromised. You know, um, when we were in Scripture in the 70s, then we started to hear that uh, that yesterday's Christian is. Uh, uh, heavenly, good for heaven, of no earthly use. Yes. So then, they now evolved to this Christian, you know, of great earthly use. No heavenly body. This is what we are facing. You know, so if you ask somebody, oh, are you a good Christian? Say, yes, so I love God. Why? Oh, pay my tax. Oh, yes. In fact, I give so much of my money. So, so I, where did you get that money? You are looking for trouble. <laughs> a lady, a pastor told me that uh, in her church, you know, somewhere in the soon later, they noticed that a young man brought in an offering. Those many years ago, 100,000 naira. Okay. So after the service, the wife of the pastor went and sat with him. He said, what work are you doing? You brought this big one. What work are you doing? He said, he said, why are you asking me that? Why, why are you asking me that? He said, so that we can be praying for you. So that the work will increase. I don't like that. Thing. I don't like that. Thing. He got up and left. Okay. But then the word, the word went around. Ah, if you bring money, they will ask you where it came from. <laughs> so nobody brought it. <laughs> so you see, when when people are more interested in the soul of the man than in the money he's bringing, ah, then they will the change will come because it's not about the uh, amount of money you're bringing; it's whether you it is holy money. Yes, you know. So so when you put in the right emphasis. 
you know, that God is looking for godly men and women. He's not looking for numbers. You know, a lot of people, you know, they, 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 they have some ego thing with numbers. You come and, and there are 5,000, 100,000, 1 million. Whether they are going to hell or not is uh, is of very little importance, you know. So if we if we stop that type of uh, discipleship, you know, and do what he taught, us, he said, go into all the world, preach the gospel, teaching them, teaching them to observe, to practice everything I've commanded. If we did that. Uh -uh. Five of them pray like that. Change will come. Change will come. Oh yeah, because you see, there's no there's no magic with God. Get it right, it will work. If you don't get it right, unfortunately, I tell people there's a lot of frustration in Christianity. If you don't get it right, no matter how long you do it for, you will not it. Thank you very much, sir. I want to read some from the post that we have online. Somebody is putting excerpts from the book. Chapter 1, page 7. He made us kings and priests unto his God and our Father, so that we will take charge in heaven's behalf and do become God's spirit on earth. And then from chapter 3, which is, he says, As kings of righteousness, we must aim at the continuous improvement of the human character that must portray and reveal the character of God. Mm -hmm. Then somebody says, Wow, these are very deep words of wisdom. Thank you for this message, sir. Um, okay. You know, okay, that says, then, okay, sorry. Somebody also said, thank you, sir. The problem is one thing large numbers. <laughs> What's just mentioned now? Large, no, yes. <laughs> large numbers. And that brings me to, you mentioned something, said there's a clear distinction between building the kingdom of men and building the kingdom of God. Oh, yeah. The kingdom of men, you know, the focus is on the organization, the yes, size, the resources, the, that's, the that's structure. The but the kingdom of God is looking at transforming man, yes, the transformation. Absolutely. I mean, it's somebody becoming a different personality, you know, like somebody like I, I used to be a sinner and now I'm a changed person or I'm bold enough to make decrees and see it happen and things like that, so making disciples of all men, you know. And when we look at the reality on ground in Nigeria, can we really say that we are building the kingdom of God or that the is, kingdom of that men? That is the problem. And that is the problem. We are not building the kingdom of God. We must have it. We are not building the kingdom of God. Because our Lord Jesus Christ, He taught us how to build the kingdom of God. Okay. He fed the 5,000. Okay. Because out of compassion, they were with Him for three days and they hadn't eaten. So the next day, what happens? The whole village, you know, they have, they've come, you know, and what have, did they come for? Another lunch. <laughs> and the, Jesus said to them, you came here for food. How many people will say that? You see, he, he said something. When that didn't drive many of them away, okay? Some left. Who came for, you know, I don't think this man will give food to them. So let us just be going home. Okay, when that didn't uh, 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 drive all of them away, then he said, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life. Ah, the man wants to make us, turn us into cannibals. So the Bible says from that day, all of them, I said, test your crowd with serious questions. Test them. I went to a church to preach. Yes, you know. And I and I said to the pastor, tell the people that the, the they will come and we, 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 uh, this was on Sunday. I said they will come on the midweek service Wednesday. Okay, nobody should ask God for anything personal. Just pray for the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Don't ask God for anything personal. On Monday, the pastor calls me, Doctor. They are all calling. You know, what shall we pray then? You've taken our list away. <laughs> <laughs> so you see if you take their list away their business their, their visa their this, take the list away for so many people there's nothing else to pray 
there is nothing else to pray. So that is how you know that we are, we are doing the wrong thing because Jesus said the priority is the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So that's not the priority. We have to return. And like I told you, if you don't get it right, it's not connect. Because you see, God is unchanging. You see, he said it. Said, I don't change. So, but get it right. Ah, everything will start going. Everything will start going. Let us change our message, you know, and raise people that God can use. And then everything will change. Do you have any questions? Okay. Thank you. Um, it's not so much question, more like um, things that went through my mind as I read the book. And um, Dr. Onoza, thank you so much for writing this book. Mm -hmm. I would say to anyone who buys this book, don't read it in a hurry. I read it in a hurry. I'll go back because it's really material for discipleship. It's a sort of book that I would even encourage people to get together in groups you know like book clubs and take it a chapter at a time and read it it's um i mean if you're like me i'm sure many people are who are tired praying for myself my needs if you're hungry and you want to go deeper <laughs> i noted here that this is meat <laughs> you know because all the other things we would thirst again when we've got all the cars and houses, we've trained our children, like Jesus said to the woman at the well, we will thirst again. You know, but a book like this that is about, I would say, the ways of God, not just the act, give us a purposeful life. For me, it's a wake up call to the church. You know, this book. There's there's just so much, but I don't want to monopolize the time. Like I asked myself. When was the last time you went into prayer and began with repentance? I saw that in the book. Oh my goodness, these are things we don't do anymore. And then in the book also, I noticed that salvation is above. When the disciples came to Jesus and said, Oh, you know, we did this. The devils are, you know, fleeing. And he said, that's not what you should rejoice about, but that your name is written in the book of life. That really touched me. And then <laughs> something else that I've never seen in my years of every year, I go through the Bible from cover to cover for like the past 10 years. I, I don't remember noticing Zechariah chapter 3 that talks about the prayer of angels. Did not know angels pray. <laughs> I know Jesus is there interceding for us so these are just um some of the things i want to point out in this book you know it points us to god's purpose and our responsibility as children of god it reminds us that all power in heaven and on earth you know belongs to god i think i'll just stop here but i must say dr Nozo, if there's a question it would be when i read the book you know, I went back to what Jesus, how Jesus taught us to pray. And the only need-oriented prayer I saw was, give us this day our daily bread. <laughs> and I discovered how far away from the original pattern my prayers are. So I wanted to ask, if there's a question I want to ask uh, Dr. Nuzo. So where is the room for our desires? Even the frivolous desires like that people like me sometimes take to God. Like, can I have a new pair of shoes and all that? Where's the place for that, sir? Thank you. Well, it's, it's very interesting um, um, that you can come before God and pray at what he wants you to pray, you know, and then as like on the way out kind of oh by the way no i need another perish that's not why you came okay so when you when you discover that that mention just that mention you know that's it you don't need to you don't need to do any other 
because Jesus, our Lord Jesus said, the Father already knows you need a parish. He already knows, you know. And so, and so you don't have to dwell on it at all. You don't have to dwell on it, you know. And, and I find that that is really very fascinating, that you can pray for a very long time. You know, they haven't prayed for anything personal. And then they kind of even prompt you. You haven't mentioned this, you know. And then you mention it. And then that's it, you go on. And to your amazement. And sometimes, sometimes, I'll give you a simple, sometimes I need this, uh, um, uh, maybe to get a, a, a carton of this water. And then I mentioned it, he said, oh, but by the way, you already have three bottles there. Can you give it to uh, Brother John over there? I said, then I will have none. Yeah, that's the whole idea. You know. Well, Lord, what is going to happen is when you bring that uh, new cut, yes, then it will be easier to. So you miss, when you do it like that, you miss the whole point that the just shall live by faith. It's when you have the conviction and the boldness to give those your three bottles away, okay? Then you wait. You now wait with expectation to see what he will do. You know? Oh, I have been there so many times. You have a need. And you say, okay, you have this already. Give it away. You know? Give it away. You give it away. You say, a lot of a lot of things that people need in their lives. You know, sometimes he will, he will be the one to ask you to sow a seed. It's not the preacher on the platform that asks you to sow a seed. No, he's the one. You know, sometimes the, you will use the preacher to to prompt you. I needed some financial support for something that I was going to do. Okay, and I I went to church and the preacher said that uh, in your balance that uh, you can bring present to KBS. Okay, and you you will sit on his throne and receive it, but that you can bring a present. I said, Kabye, I have present for you. See where is it? You cannot enter the palace. So Kabye, you will have to get up to come and see the present. Then the preacher said, give a present to the Kabye of all Kabye that you will have to get up to come and see what you brought. Or do you know? You see, that's the way these things work. As I was sitting there, the Holy Spirit was telling me, that money I've been saved. That's that's what they're talking about. That money I've been saved. That's what they're So, without hesitation, I wrote that money off. And then, unbelievably, my need was met. You know, my need was met. Those are the testimonies you have that it's not about some ritualistic or doctrinal thing. No, you are led by the Spirit. So he knows where the harvest is. So, he knows where he needs the seed. That you send the seed to where he needs it, they have a spirit. Yeah, it's the way of the spirit. Very much, sir. There's a comment here. <clears throat> it says, I concur 100% to the life material for every pilgrim. Yes, so in just for <laughs> that was the response. You were actually speaking my mind because I also read the book in a hurry and I told myself I have to come back and read this book again, chapter by chapter, because it's all about spiritual governance and as christians are we able to make that impact what is our purpose what impact are we making and you said something about like disconnecting you know, like going to the source you want to make a decree and we go to the source and that reminded me there was one day this um a fan in my room remote control and i was pressing the remote to stop it didn't stop I, I was what's happening then something said go and disconnect it from source so I just got up and then, and then it was a spiritual principle for me that if something is actually disturbing you, go and disconnect from source, the source of power. And then you are taking care of that situation. The lot of things that we see even in our nation, Nigeria, we need, and that's this book actually guided me the prayers we had yesterday because we do prayers for Nigeria every Wednesday. Oh. So it guided me that so I said, let's make the today, you know. So that is what we are expected to do. 
But then I have a question also, talking about the sovereign grace that you talked about with Joshua. Each time I read about the high priest Joshua, I'm like, God, what you did here for Joshua? Are you still doing the same? Or is it just through the blood of Jesus? And then what are the ramifications? Are there levels? And is it, um, is it available 70 by 7 a day? You know, because with Joshua, what he did was, the accuser of the bread, he said, yes, I can see all we, all we are talking about, but shut up. I've decided to grant him grace and wash him and cleanse him and give him a new beginning and, and say, go and sin no more. So I'm looking at, in our own time, in our present dispensation, do we, are we enjoying that? Yeah, because that time, the blood wasn't available because the branch had not manifested. Yes. You know, so for Joshua's time. So but that's why he sent the branch. He said, I'm going to bring the branch mm -hmm. so that I don't have to do this the way I have done it here. So we, when the branch comes, everybody can have access to clean up their app. And, and, and the thing about that cleaning up the app is, if I came now, opened your bag and took 500 now and you saw me and you said, I'm very sorry, I'm sorry. But then you looked away, I took a thousand and then I said, I'm sorry. Then you look away, I took 2,000. No. After a while, I might be, I will now have to tell you, I know you don't believe me, <laughs> but I want you to still know that I'm sorry. Does it make any sense? That's what is causing the whole problem. So if a person says, I have repented, you know, it's not that I'm sorry, no, I have repented. You see, because once you repent, then you have counted that thing off. So if somebody says, you know, you, uh, he and his wife, they're always fighting and beating each other. Okay. They say they have now repented. So what is the expectation that from that day, the fight has a, uh, eh? oh, yes. So a, 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 a lot of the teaching in the church does not explain repentance. Because many people don't know what repentance is. You cannot go to the office and collect bribe and go home and kneel down and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I've repented. And then you go back to the office the next day and collect bride again. And you're making a jest of the whole thing now. It doesn't make any sense. So, if you now uh, uh, went back to, uh, home and said, Lord, you know this bride, I, that's what I used to fuel my car. So, I don't know how you're going to help me. Oh, because if I stop collecting it, that means... I, I wouldn't know where to get money. See, now you're being realistic. Okay, so so now you say such a prayer. It's okay. Call um, uh, Mr. John in your office. Tell him that you'll be waiting to, to take a ride with him. Yes. He said, since you can no longer afford and you want to live godly. So you have so now you have to wake up early in the and go and wait in the bus. And the bus stop for Brother John. Sometimes he comes, sometimes he comes and doesn't come. So, you know, that is it. The way you are going through all of that, as you are saying, whatever price I need to pay for righteousness, I will pay it. That is what is lacking. Because if you want to live righteous, you pay a price. You pay a price. So, but, and if you are not ready to pay that price, ah, then you are not ready for righteousness. You are not ready to, for righteousness. It is when you now pay that price, the anointing will come down. Because you see, ah, this man is serious. <laughs> you know. But the people who will just depend on repenting, they, sorry, you know, you collect bribes today, sorry, to let bribe they, they, won't do any, they, they cannot do anything with you. They can't do anything. Because you don't even understand the way the system runs. You know. Thank you so much, sir. I want to encourage everyone, please get a copy of this book. And really, you know, like my sister said, you can even organize a study group on this book because it's really life material. And it's just talking about, I mean, I don't know about you, but I've never wanted to be an ordinary Christian, a Christian with no impact. And that's what we see all around. You know, us no impact because we are not connected to the power. And one way of connecting the power that you emphasize in the book is obedience, living righteously, so that we can become candidates to be empowered. When the power comes upon us, we can operate as Jesus, living upon the face of the earth. And that's what is expected, and that's what's going to change our world. 
it's going to be like a ripple effect that will change in Nigeria. Yes, but Elton has given you know a pro- prophetic word, but then the actualization is going to come to us as we learn. And I want to thank you so much, sir, for giving us the opportunity to draw from your wealth of knowledge and experience. And then um, I pray that the Lord will continue to keep you, sir, and in good health and strength in Jesus' name. Amen. So, thank if there's you. There's no other question. I think we can um, begin to wrap up this session right now. And um, what I have here is um, the Simba brand presentation for three minutes. Are they around? You have three minutes. And then we'll have the concluding remarks by Pastor Remy Morgan, the CEO of Latana, and then the Latana advert video. Simba, are you actually ready? This the floor is yours. And you have three minutes, and I'm counting. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. And my name is Vita Debisi. I'm the head of retail for Simba Group. And uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. We've had an amazing time here. Just listening to Dr. Nuzo here. Very insightful. The book is amazing, by the way. And it makes my heart. It makes my heart. And um, yeah, three minutes. So we'll just like to introduce our product. Uh, Simba Group, we distribute power solutions. Uh, we distribute power, um, that's um, the renewable energy sector. We all know right now in Nigeria, <laughs> we need to find alternative sources of power because the grid is not reliable, it's not sufficient, it's, uh, it collapses every second. It doesn't have power. <laughs> There's no power. Um, and it's very expensive. I never knew a day will come country will be paying so much for lights. I mean, <laughs> I remember one time, my very uh, a long time ago, my dad used to say, he would say Yoruba, and ah, where do you go? And really, we are like, where you go now, if you understand what I mean? <laughs> you come out of your room, you switch off the lights, turn off the AC, turn everybody's managing power now. I never knew we'll get to that point. But we have an alternative to that. Power from the sun. The sun, the power from the sun is free. It's affordable and reliable because here in this part of the world, the sun will always rise. So um, we have the power solutions to afford us that opportunity. And um, it's quite affordable. And what's more, what's more interesting is um, we have a promo running right now. We started the Black Friday promo, whereby you can buy your solutions at very affordable rates. And we're giving free installation and delivery. So we have a stand here. We have we have partnered with Laterna Books. Thank you so much, Pastor Remy. We have our stand here. And our consultants are also available. Right after the book signing, please do not be in a hurry. You can interact with them. They will explain to you. They will consult with you. Find out how much power you need. Because what happens most times is that we just buy. Okay, buy 10 kilowatts. Buy 10 kilowatts. You, pro- you may not need up to 10 kilowatts to power your home. Right? So we have that available. I don't want to take too much time. I know my time is up, ma. Thank you so much for the opportunity. God bless you all. Thank you so much, Sina, for keeping to time. And so we will have Pastor Remy now to give us the closing remarks. Let's put our hands together as we welcome Pastor Remy. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Uncle. Uh, it's great to see you here. And to very good to see you as well. First of all, I just want to say a big thank you to our uh, moderator, uh, Pastor Nana Odejai. Not only is she our moderator, she has been a viewer of quite a number of books. She's an author herself, and I want to appreciate you for being here. Strongo, it's really, really good to see you. Uh, this is just vintage uncle. <laughs> uh, of course, you've been like a father to us, the Papa family of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And in many a place, uh, I've seen you, invited you for very significant programs. And uncle has always honored those invitations. I've listened to you in Jesus House London, listened to you in Jesus House Chicago. There was a time we were staying in Pastor Bayer's house together. And fascinatingly, Uncle can wake up in the morning to wash the dishes. To wash, this is the truth. Am I lying, sir? 
No, no, no. Re- really, really fascinating. Amen. And uh, talking about power, switching up power. I don't know, remember, I don't know if, if you can remember some conversation we had or one ministration. I think it was in someone's house in Maryland. And you spoke about having to go around and switch off the power before you left home every day. I don't know if you remember that. And there was something you also said about shopping for auntie, buying clothes for her. Yes, I remember those things. And uh, I received that same anointing. Sir. So every time I traveled, <laughs> I would and I could proudly say when they are burning Yinka's dresses, that mm, I'm the one responsible for that. So we want to thank God for you, your mentorship in so, so many ways. I mean, just cutting through all the stuff that is out and just really very incisive delivery. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, we have uh, a few other authors here and uh, book reviewers, my dear sis. God bless you. Mm-hmm. I didn't really know it was you from the side though, until you turned around and saw it was you. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, we come a long way. Bible school together about 30 years ago, etc. Yes, now we're the first set of Bible school in Freedom Hall, 1934 or something like that. So please, we appreciate Mrs. Kalango. Uh, like I said, an author herself. Uh, she has a new series she has been doing. She did a book on Daddy Geo, and then you did the Wale Shoenka thing as well. And you were here last week, yeah, for her own uh, presentation, book presentation to the children. Let's celebrate her. Hmm? Well done. And, and, and you said something very instructive, that there's so much content in here. It's not the kind of book that you want to rush through. And ideally, you know, a book reading club, pick it up and then go through literally a chapter by chapter. There's so many gems in there. You don't really want to rush through. And it's all about empowering us as believers and understanding, you know, what God has graced us with. And yeah, I don't know. Maybe you have a start of a virtual online thing. Let's do it. And we can read this book. It's a challenge. Will you respond? I was listening to a man of God on Sunday. You were there. Pastor Shopi. And he says that when you make a request, and he says he's going to pray about it. He's not, he's not, he doesn't have the time for that. <laughs> so I hope that's not what you are trying to tell us today. Uh, no, but that's serious. Yes, that's, that's considered. Huh? How many chapters? It's not too long. Yeah. By 12, 30 minutes, one hour. We're done. Yeah? Okay. So to everybody else as well, uh, we are all very, very welcome. We have our elders. They are good people sitting at the back there. Uncle Demo. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, thank you, uh, Uncle, for such a great time. Uh, we thank God for all the various book reading sessions we have had, book reviews. Uh, my wife is not here. <laughs> One meeting after the other. I don't know how she copes. You know, with her schedule, her prayer partner, her prayer, you know, her mother, do well. So, anyway, she's not here, but she has always had a burden for us. She will tell us, I think we've done about 63 of these things. But, uh, you are the people tracking now. Huh? And it's just been a real, a real, a real blessing. You know, you sit down and you're part of this. I, you just wish, can we really sit? And I guess that's what you're saying. I really like it because, you know, I'm good talking for 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Is you just want more, and that's how God said it. So, to everyone, thank you for being a part of the program today. Uh, today, I believe it's the last of what we have for the year, and uh, we're trying to finalize what it is that we're going to be doing in January. So, we will update that in the appropriate time and give you all the form. I just noticed our dear brother there, uh, Pastor Mukhtar. Hallelujah. The man that talks all about investments. He was our moderator at the last. Uh, so, so that was all about AI. It was a, a, a business title. It was about the genus, the folks who are responsible for making AI happen. And I think he's always become like a disciple, an apostle of the whole AI thrust. That's something we should be aware of now. It's a very vital tool. There's so much learning. There's so much information. 
<laughs> there's so much knowledge in the place of AI. Um, and just to digress, I mean, the facilitator last week, he challenged us, says you're all involved in one function or the other. Pick up your telephones and ask AI, how can I function much more effectively? And everyone, it was like <laughs> an exercise that everyone had to undertake. And the results were really, really interesting. So my first question was, well, how do I function better? As a pastor, I gave me a whole bunch of things that I get to do. Then I asked, the next question was, how do I function better as the CEO of Latala Venture? And you know, <laughs> that came up as well. I just encourage us, part of our learning, part of our development, there is so much. And then you can ask other questions. It gives you a response and then you can prove further. And it's free of charge. So <laughs> it's all about knowledge and decision. So once again, thank you very much. God bless you all. And uh, Pastor Yemo, we recognize you have come for second service. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've been following us online. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. All right. Once again, thank you. And to Simba, we look forward to greater levels of cooperation. Yeah? Appreciate the Simba folks. Uh, God bless you. Real good.